Someone mentioned earlier how North Carolina has reduced its income tax. It reduces it over two years to 5.75% flat rate. Isn't 6% with redu deductions better than 5.75 flat rate? I haven't seen the bill. I don't know if they, I don't know if they, I don't think they eliminated all deductions and exemptions, did they? Is it a base on adjust, adjusted gross income? Well, I'm, I'm reading here where it says a flat, a flat, a if flat it's flat adjustable gross income, you're right. Uh, yeah. that, that I, be, I, I'm just reading an article. So it'd be more simple, but it'd be a higher, higher amount, of lower, higher amount of taxes. Right. So, you know, again, we're talking about structure. The amount of money you raise can be high or low, and you know, if you want to raise taxes, it can be more efficient to raise taxes. But uh, it's it's how it's structured, and the problem with the exemptions and deduction is more of an equity issue. Uh, not, it's clearly more efficient just to uh, apply the tax to just gross income. Maybe at some point in the future we can get some information on totally what North Carolina I'll has done. You know, pro Tem there, Senator Pro Tem is a good friend of mine as well in CSL. It's yeah, going to have some of that too. I can answer some of that. Um, Would you come forward the mic or maybe just share the other mic over there? Either way, it's easy. They, they have um, they have an, a, a different situation as far as an interesting situation. So when they say they moved to a flatter tax, they got rid of brackets. So that's oh. that's one of the things. Um, the the package is a lot less aggressive and ambitious than some of us would have hoped, and that many people in the Senate would have hoped, and it's been sort of rancorous pushing through with that. So they got, they leveled it, leveled it, made it flatter in terms of brackets. Um, they had a situation where they are much, let's see how I they have many more special exemptions, special credits, special deals for special industries that have been in place for a long time, many more than we do. When we look at our tax code and we looked at getting rid of all the credits and exemptions and so on, frankly, when I ran that through with the fiscal research people, I said, well, how much revenue will that generate for us? Thinking, okay, you get rid of all these special deals and then you get your income. The number was zero because people, uh, companies, you know, the, the tax break doesn't come for three years, then they don't end up taking it. It's just not that big a deal for us. But it is evidently, as I understand it from several people, they're a really big deal in North Carolina. They're just, um, so they're going to release a lot of revenue by getting rid of a lot of special deals. So that's and how they paid for it. Yeah, but they didn't get there. I think, as you mentioned, they didn't get the income tax rate down very far. What they went from what to five point seven five seven seven five. seven. And I believe that's ratcheted over a couple of years. Yeah, that's true. And uh, another another element. So so I just say right off the bat, I think that we can get it if we work at it to three percent. And I think three percent. If we go from six to three on personal income tax, it gets us eighty percent or so of the economic benefit. I think we get the lion's share done if we can get it that far, and uh, we don't have to get to zero. We can get a lot done. But so they did are not coming anywhere near the three percent, which they had hoped to do. Senator Davis, do you have any questions? Yes, sir, I do. Uh, I wanted to ask. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I wanted to ask question to all of you. When you're when you're advocating for broadening the tax base, what are those specifics? What do you mean when you say broadening the tax base? Well, that means on the income tax side, we have uh, itemized deductions. Most of these reforms would limit the amount of itemized deductions as they lower the rate. On the sales tax side, it's, we're mainly talking about taxing services. And you've got groceries in there, but other than groceries, you're really talking about services like telecommunications, lawn care, automobile, repair, health care, you know, professional, other professional services, any, all personal consumption is the broadest base. And so as close as you can get there, politically, uh, if it, that's the most efficient base that you can have. Before you answer that, Dr. Reese, um, earlier, Kelly, you made the statement that Georgia has, Georgia's ranked 40 per capita income, uh, where citizens are concerned using your last statement and your thought, would it not be true or safe to assume that, you know, again, this whole notion of broadening the tax base, ultimately you're still taking more money out of my pocket 
and I'm not in a position to be able to say more. If I don't lower the rate, you're absolutely right. It's got it's a balancing act. And as you broaden the base, you can lower the rate. And it's going to affect everybody a little bit differently. If you do it correctly, you, know, you can, can balance out the negative impacts. All right, so I'm going to ask another question, Mr. Chairman. Yeah, go ahead, please. Um, can can I, I answer? Sort of, can I, I speak to the yeah, last one? Let's go to the last question. And then Virginia Galloway, did you have a comment I, on the I last question? I want to say something quickly about uh, the broadening that uh, base, and that would be. Okay. Uh, there you go. Uh, there are people in uh, Florida that live in, well, you know, the border cities in Florida and Alabama and uh, Tennessee and other states that have higher sales tax that come across and buy groceries in Georgia to avoid sales tax. Um, so that would, you know, it, it just would make sense to put the sales tax uh, back on groceries. The the uh, poor uh, are mostly on uh, food stamps now. One out of seven Americans are on food stamps. I would assume there's at least that many in Georgia uh, uh, proportionally. So they're not going to pay sales tax on groceries. Uh, but people uh, traveling here that have vacation homes and that kind of thing here and people traveling through um, would help broaden that base as well. It wouldn't all be from Georgians. Um, but it would certainly affect Georgians. But would I rather pay a couple of hundred dollars a year, uh, a year on sales tax and have a job or not pay sales tax on food and not have a job? And I think that's the question uh, for the uh, folks in the middle uh, that might otherwise be hurt because we know that we have a potential to either gain jobs through what we do with tax reform or, or not, and, and we certainly want Georgians working, and I think Georgians want to work. Are you suggesting that the folks in the middle are the ones who would be hurt in this balancing act? I mean, is that what I'm hearing? I don't think they would be because they would. Because I'm, I'm in the middle. I, I, me too. <laughs> Let me just say that when we did the numbers, Virginia was proposing something similar. And we actually ran these models and looked at the number of the jobs that were created were $30,000 a year jobs. So seems to me that's people in the middle and that's exactly where the economic growth hits so that least that's for Virginia and that's what the studies and we'll know that soon well, I make a lot more than 30,000 but I think I'm still in the middle mr. chairman I want to ask one more question sure and this goes back um, I think I actually got a lot of questions but I won't well I'd like to get more into this so I understand more but to Kelly's point you were talking about jobs in Georgia and you tied this conversation with our ability to be competitive. Over the last five, six years, would it, is it not true that most of the jobs that we've recruited into Georgia have been service industry related jobs as opposed to manufacturing and thereby there are in fact lower wages than if I were to take my engineering degree and go work for uh, the, the new pharmaceutical <coughs> here? Yes, the economists that, that, that looked at, you know, why Georgia's per capita personal income is so low said, you know, fortunately we are adding jobs now, but they are lower wage jobs. I think Senator Balfour also had a question here as well, and we'll wrap this up in a moment. Senator? Yeah, they, and, and I agree, and we've talked about it, you got to look at this dynamically. Um, my wife once a month goes to Raleigh, North Carolina to visit her parents. And she's figured out over the course of taking that trip a dozen times or so that the cheapest gas is in South Carolina. I don't know if that's because of tax or whatever else, but it's, it's, it it's 20 cents cheaper. So she waits until she's almost in Charlotte to fill up with gas because that gets her enough gas to get to Raleigh and get back to hopefully south of Greenville, South Carolina, to where she can fill up again. Now, that's a one-person analysis, but... But, but, but the same would also run true when you talk about uh, if we're going to put tax on food. Those people at the border may be crossing the border to buy at Publix or Kroger's because they don't pay sales tax in Georgia. And if you put the sales tax back on food, there's a negative dynamics in that. Um, a, a couple other things, and it's really not a question, but you spoke about the the politics. I mean, I, I you know, I, 
I can theoretically work through these things. I, I found it somewhat bizarre when a major church denomination came out opposed to the tax bill a couple years ago because we got rid of charitable deductions. Um, now, I, I can see where some people may give because they get a 30% federal deduction. I can't imagine they're going to lower whatever they give because instead of getting 6%, they're only getting 3%. I mean, they're, they're, if they're giving because of a deduction, it's because of that big federal, not because, so, but, but a, a denomination that I don't think has ever been involved in any political thing down here that I've been in in 30 years, all of a sudden took a stand one way on the tax bill. Um, the other thing, Kelly, and you've seen this as well, being in the midst of this, there have been times when we've come to a, what we thought was a final conclusion. We have not changed a single number. We haven't checked a new box. And all of a sudden, the number changed 300 million. Right. And you're like, where, where did that $300 million change go? What in today's economy makes our current tax structure unfair? You're asking all of us. Uh, I am. Okay. Who are wrong answer? What makes it unfair? Ineffective or un unfair? What makes it unfair? All right, I'll give you an example. Say you and I have exactly the same salary, same family, and because your job requires you to move around maybe from county to county, you rent an apartment and I've bought a house. I have a large mortgage deduction and property taxes that I get to deduct when they, you don't have because you're renting. Uh, is that fair? If we got a rid, rid of uh, that deduction and charged everybody the same, it gave everybody the same deduction, charging the same rate, would that not be more fair? I mean, assuming that you were to expand the tax base to services and to food, what would what would the overall sales tax have to be increased to in order to make up the lost revenue for from the from cutting the income tax? Eleven percent. Well, I'll let uh, if, Kelly McCutcheon. Senator Ligon, if you, um, I've got a table I handed out to people that were here. I can email it to you. If you okay. ex expanded the tax base roughly by the amount that the tax council recommended, the, and right. cut the income tax rate to three percent. You could increase the sales tax by two to two percent. It's it's it, so from four percent to six percent would pay for that. Right. It, and then one more, Mr. Chair, one more question: Is there a threshold where where you where you can't raise the sales tax beyond where it becomes counterproductive? In the sense that you may have states next to you that have a slightly lower sales tax, but then you have to. Like the, the flight of people going to that state to make their purchase? That's probably a subjective question. It depends on where you live. If you live in Dalton, it's not quite as important with the Tennessee having high sales taxes as it would be if you lived in Columbus. Uh, yeah. So it really depends. But I, I think most people I talk to, you know, 13, 14 percent is getting on up there, and that would be uncompetitive. Uh, you know, what the amount, the differential necessary to cause a change in behavior, you know, who knows, 20 cents in gas with found changes your behavior. Um, certainly say paying no tax on groceries causes some change. How far will people really drive? I mean, there are all kinds of factors. 